so clearly this is a slightly different video um i figured maybe i'd do this because a lot of my videos are you know you see my hands and something that i'm holding and discussing in the camera and maybe you've noticed that they my hands kind of look crappy i'm definitely not a candidate to be a hand model <laughs> so um <clears throat> I was going to do a video today that would require, you know, usual hands in the video. Well, I was thinking either another one of those calendar ones or another uh, card one. But my hands are re really bad today. And I didn't know what to do. I thought about um, just going with it. <laughs> but then I was like, well, if I don't address this, it's going to just look weird to these viewers that will see these disgusting hands. And then I thought about putting on some gloves, but then I thought that would be suspicious because I, I never wear gloves. So it'd be weird if all of a sudden here I am making a video with gloves. So then I'd still have to address it. So I figure maybe what we can do is just kind of talk about it and get it out there. <laughs> so I've had this problem severely since 2008. Um, nowadays, it kind of—I wouldn't say it comes and goes, but it flares up and gets really bad, and then it'll kind of get to an okay status, and it flares up. I mean, for the most part, my hands are never perfect. The best they get is okay, but right now they're in really bad status. I mean, it's to the point where some of my fingers are swollen. I can't bend them all the way. Uh, I got very dry, scaly skin. Uh, it cracks like I'm uh, I'm stumbling <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words while I'm trying to describe this because I'm looking at my hand thinking <laughs> but anyhow right now my left hand is a lot better than my right hand so I'm holding the phone talking with my left hand my right hand's practically uh, crippled uh, immobile whatever you want to say unusable because it's just so bad right now so anyways, what I have is eczema. So eczema, as it says here, is a condition where patches of skin become inflamed, itchy, red, cracked, and rough. Blisters may sometimes occur, which the blisters when they occur are, um, or at least for me, they're, uh, I don't even know how to explain them, they're just weird. You, you get these little bubbles, and they're fairly easy to pop. Like, I, I mean, you don't even have to try to pick at them. You just accidentally rub it a little bit too rough and they pop. And they leak this really sticky, clear stuff. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what it is, what the body is making. But it's really sticky. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with because if you wash your hands, that's usually not enough. You Because they'll continue to leak afterwards. So even though you wash your hands to get the sticky stuff off, it, once your hands dry from being washed, if they're still leaking, then you're still going to have sticky hands. So you need to either... Basically, you need to wait for it to close that hole up that it made from popping one of those blisters, and then you're fine. So in the meantime, either A, you need to have a Band-Aid, or B, what I used to do is I'd walk around with like a napkin and just stick it on there. <laughs> <laughs> it looked stupid, but at least I wouldn't have to deal with the stickiness and getting it all over everything. So anyhow, back to the story here. Different stages and types of eczema affect 31.6% of people in the United States. The word eczema is also used specifically to talk about atopic dermatitis, the most common type of eczema. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't been to the dermatologist um, since... 2009 maybe because I, I was going a lot and they just kept doing stupid patch tests on me and experimenting and oh try this medication out try this steroid out try this out and it just I stopped going because it started to be a waste of my time I was I had to take time off from work to go down there and then I travel it was my dermatologist center whatever you want to call it <laughs> the dermatologist I was going to was not super far but you know probably half an hour away all highway so you know when you factor in speeds and stuff that's a fair distance and then i had to pay you know the copay while i was there i had to pay for the medications and i was doing this every 
what was it once every two weeks i was going or once a month something like that and then there, it was just getting nowhere all they were doing was experimenting on me like the condition i have isn't that ridiculous that a, a, a professional skin up <clears throat> let me back up a skin professional shouldn't know what it is so that's why i stopped going and i figured i'd work on ways to handle this on my own so anyhow um i as i said i haven't been to the dermatologist for <laughs> quite some time but i think they said i have what this says here the atopic dermatitis because i'm pretty sure my hands are um th they flare up due to external stimuli like it's hard for me to do anything around the apartment like dishes if i want to do my dishes i have to plan that out i have to wait until my hands are in decent enough shape so i can do dishes and then chances are very high that my hands are going to be screwed up after that but i have to plan it out that way then i can be ready for that <laughs> or like if i want to clean you know using if i use lysol wipes or basically anything even if i just use windex and a paper towel that stuff gets on on my hands and acts up it doesn't even matter if i wash my hands instantly it's the point that it got on my hands and now i have to deal with you know some kind of flare-up so usually i always try to do my cleaning when my hands are in better shape because at least then i can handle a flare-up better like if i tried to do cleaning now <laughs> i can't do that my hands are in such terrible shape now it would just be miserable for me <sighs> so yeah, so anyways, I think that's what I have. So I have another article ready to go that goes more in depth about atopic dermatitis. So atopic dermatitis is a condition that makes your skin red and itchy. My skin is always red and can get ridiculously itchy, which one treatment I've discovered for the itchiness, which <laughs> probably isn't <laughs> something good to be doing, but it does feel very good for the first few seconds is um, when my hands get really itchy, I put scalding hot water on them. And like I said, for the first couple of seconds, it feels so good. And then it's like, I always say I burn off the itch. So once the itch is burned off, then then all of a sudden I feel the actual you know pain of the hot water and then it's not comfortable anymore. But at first it's very euphoric. Like when my, I only do this when my hands are very itchy. Like sometimes I'll get a spot that's itchy Maybe like the back of my hand or one of the, uh, what do you call it? The parts where your fingers connect, you know, you make that U <laughs> down at the bottom. Sometimes like in there, it'll get itchy, but if it's only a localized area, I'm not going to burn myself. But if it's practically like my whole hand is itchy, that's like the only way I can get relief. Otherwise, I don't know how to scratch it and it just never goes away. So I need to burn it. <sighs> like I said, obviously it's probably not a good choice if i told a dermatologist that <laughs> but it works and then i feel better for at least an hour or so afterwards but anyhow back to the story <clears throat> it's common in children but can occur at any age yeah for me it started when i was about 20 atopic dermatitis is long lasting chronic and tends to flare periodically yes and yes i mean ever since it started in 2008 it's never subsided for me ever I, it's an every single day thing that I deal with ever since ever since February 2008 12 years straight now <laughs> anyhow it may be accompanied by asthma or hay fever luckily I don't have either of those yet but <sighs> with my luck I'm sure those will be coming soon no cure has been found for atopic dermatitis but treatments and self-care measures can relieve itching and prevent new outbreaks yeah I wonder why there's no treat no cures it's because it's a common thing and just like diabetes the hospitals i mean the medical industry would rather do treatments than cures because treatments rake in more money over the person's life than a cure does i mean i guess you can call out a conspiracy theory so we're not going to get into that but it's just my take on things anyway for example it helps to avoid harsh soaps i know moisturize your skin regularly yes but that gets messy and apply medicated creams or ointments. I do when I have it. <laughs> Ooh, you create uh, something for me to remember, I guess. <laughs> symptoms. Atopic dermatitis, eczema, signs and symptoms vary widely from person to person and include dry skin, yep, itching, 
which may be severe, especially at night. I don't know about that, especially at night. From my personal experience, it's more in the morning. It's almost like my hands haven't been active all night, and that's why some reason they're super itchy in the morning. Um, red to brownish gray patches. I haven't had brownish gray, but yes, I'm red all the time. Especially on the hands. Yep. Feet. Not yet. Ankles. Nope. Wrists. Yes. Neck. Not yet. Upper chest. Nope. Eyelids. Only in winter. It affects my face in winter. Like it's starting to clear up now because it's not as it hasn't been as cold. But when it's like down to the tens and such like that, oh my face flares right up. December tenth. <laughs> I remember that day because I started a new job on December 9th. And December 10th, I had a flare-up, and it was embarrassing. I'm at my new job, and it looks like I just got into a fight the day before because my face is all puffy and red and... Ugh. Anyhow. Inside the bend of the elbows and knees and an infant's the face and scalp. Speaking of infants, though, they have a picture of infantile eczema over there, and I feel bad for that kid. Man, that would suck. I mean, th that looks like my hands but all over your legs and look at the heel Ugh. suck poor kid poor parents have to try to handle that as well <laughs> anyhow small raised bumps which can lead leak fluid and crust over when scratched i brushed up on those how it's really sticky weird fluid thickened cracked scaly skin Yes, that is what's happening on my right hand right now. It's very weird, thick, scaly crap. Raw, sensitive, swollen skin from scratching. Can't say it's from scratching, but as I said, my right hand is pretty swollen right now. Atopic dermatitis most often begins before age 5 and may persist into adolescence and adulthood. For some people, it flares periodically and then clears up for a time, even for several years. Well, A, mine began at 20. <laughs> B. I wish mine would flare periodically and clear up for a time. Come on. As I said, mine's been 12 years straight. <laughs> no breaks. Like like I said in the beginning of the video, even when it is on, on break time, it's, it's only okay. It's not perfect. <sighs> okay, when to see a doctor. See a doctor if you or your child, A, is so uncomfortable that the condition is affecting sleep and daily activities doesn't affect my sleep but i can say it does affect my daily activities i mean this like i said it becomes borderline crippling it gets to the point where using my hands is very challenging it sucks uh has a skin infection look for red streaks pus yellow scabs continues to experience symptoms despite trying home remedies well i always have some symptoms and i do try home remedies but i don't know if my home remedies are home remedy-ish <laughs> enough. I just use a certain cream that typically works okay for me. <laughs> Seek immediate medical attention for your child if the rash looks infected and he or she has a fever. Uh, causes. Healthy skin re helps retain moisture and protects you from bacteria, irritants, and allergens. Eczema is related to a gene variation that affects the skin's ability to provide this protection. This allows your skin to be affected by environmental factors, irritants, and allergens. In some children, food allergies may play a role in causing eczema. Risk factors. The primary risk factor for atopic dermatitis is having a personal or family history of eczema, allergies, hay fever, or asthma. <coughs> Ooh. Complications. Complications of atopic dermatitis eczema may include eczema and hay fever, Oops, asthma and hay fever. Eczema sometimes precedes these conditions. More than half of young children with atopic dermatitis develop asthma and hay fever by age 13. Chronic itchy, scaly skin. A skin condition called neurodermatitis, lichen simplex chronic, yes, starts with a patch of itchy skin. You scratch the area, which makes it even itchier. Eventually, you may scratch simply out of habit. <laughs> yep, that happens with me to the point now that I'm so used to scratching that I notice even when I'm not itchy I'm still scratching and then I'm like this is probably gonna activate it and make this come back while it's in its recessive phase but it's just a habit like I said 12 years straight so <laughs> this condition can ta cause the affected skin to become discolored thick and leathery skin infections 
Repeated scratching that breaks the skin can cause open sores and cracks. These increase the risk of infection from bacteria and viruses, including the herpes simplex virus, irritant, and dermatitis. This, especially people, affects people whose work requires that their hands are often wet and exposed to harsh soaps, detergents, and disinfectants. See, that's kind of my problem. Like I said, I, it's hard for me to do any kind of cleaning because my hands just instantly flare up. Allergic contact dermatitis. This condition is common in people with atopic dermatitis. I may have that as well. I don't know. You know, like I said, my dermatologist basically sucked. <laughs> so... <laughs> sleep problems. The itch-scratch cycle can cause poor sleep quality. Prevention. What the... We're gonna get to that, that one in a minute. Prevention. The following tips may help prevent bouts of dermatitis flares and minimize the drying effects of bathing. Moisturize your skin at least twice a day. Creams, ointments, and lotions seal in moisture. Choose a product or products that work well for you. Using petroleum jelly on your baby's skin may help prevent development of atopic dermatitis. Problem with me moisturizing all day is, yeah, it might help with my hands being in a lot better shape than they are, but um, it's, it's very messy. The cream... You know, it gets all over everything, and it's on my hands. So, and I don't want to wear gloves because I'm not... Sh I think gloves act as, like, a catalyst sometimes as well. Like, my hands are very finicky. So, I just moisturize at night. Go to bed, do it at night. That's my time. Because then it doesn't matter. It's only going to get on my bed, you know? Try to identify and avoid triggers that worsen the condition. Things that can worsen the skin reaction include sweat, stress, obesity... I'm kind of husky. Soaps, detergents, dust, and pollen. Reduce your exposure to your triggers. What's that mean? I just gotta start losing weight? <laughs> and then my hands will get better? Mm. Infants and children may experience flares from eating certain foods, including eggs, milk, soy, and wheat. And that's another thing. I heard milk actually doesn't help with eczema. Something in the milk... I don't really remember, so I'm not even going to try to talk about it, but, and that's a problem of mine, I do like milk, so it's kind of hard, I don't want to stop drinking it, but I'm like, I want to try that for experimental purposes to see if it actually helps. Hmm. Talk with your child's doctor about identifying potential food allergies. Take shorter baths or showers. Well, mine are only about five minutes, so this doesn't do me any good, but it says limit your baths and showers to 10 to 15 minutes and use warm rather than hot water. Well, lucky for them, I don't like hot. I don't like the burning feeling, unless, of course, like I said, my hands are super itchy. But otherwise, my whole body, I don't like that. All right, now the thing that I was intentionally trying to block was it says take a bleach bath. That sounds intense. Like, what? <laughs> The American Academy of Dermatology recommends considering a bleach bath to help prevent flares. A diluted bleach bath decreases bacteria on the skin and related infections. Add half a cup or 118 milliliters of household bleach, not concentrated bleach, to a 40 gallon, 151 liter bathtub filled with warm water. Measures are for a U.S. standard size tub filled to the overflow drainage holes. Soak from the neck down or just the affected areas of skin for about 10 minutes. Do not submerge the head. Take a bleach bath no more than twice a week. I don't know, that sounds weird. Imagine it works though. <laughs> Use only gentle soaps. Choose mild soaps. Deodorant soaps and antibacterial soaps can remove more natural oils and dry your skin. Well, I really like antibacterial because I feel like, what's the point of using soap if I'm not going to kill the germs? What, 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 I'm just trying to give my hands a scent? But I have heard that as well, that, you know, it takes, it kills the good bacteria and such, which could help affect my skin as it doesn't have that natural protective layer anymore defense whatever you want to say dry yourself carefully after bathing gently pat your skin with a soft towel and apply moisturizer while your skin is still damp 
they always say to apply moisturizer when their skin is still damp. I never have because anytime I've tried it, it doesn't absorb at all. Like, I've used lotions. I, I have to use a certain lotion now because regular lotion doesn't cut it. it. Every lotion practically burns besides one, which I'll get to in a minute. But when this wasn't the case and I could use regular lotion, there'd be lotions that would end up rubbing in. You know, you rub your hands for a little bit and eventually it's in. You know, you can't really rub them smoothly anymore. If I do this when they were wet, it would never rub in. So I never liked to do that because I thought it was just stupid. <sighs> okay. End of article. Now the last one is the cream that I use. So this is what I use. I use this product Bag Bomb. Um, it's very messy. It doesn't rub in because, well, it says down here, ingredients, pet petrolatum, you know, it's basically petroleum jelly. So it doesn't rub in at all. Um, but, <laughs> but this roughly works okay for me. I mean, usually when my hands like they are now are in terrible shape, it will take about, I don't know, a day or two and then they're back to okay so and as i said this doesn't burn uh, out of all the creams and stuff i use it always burns and this doesn't affect me like my hands are in terrible shape now and yeah it'll hurt at first just because my hands are in bad shape but it's not the cream that's hurting me it's just my hands hurt you know because they're in terrible shape so this is what i use i get it from walmart it's not 10 50 there it's like 7.99 but this is exactly what I use in this tin. <laughs> Eight ounce. Um, I didn't realize there was other pictures other than that baby. <laughs> what does it say though? It says, our bag bomb hand and body skin moisturizer. It works perfectly on dry or cracked hands, feet, elbows, knees, shoulders, and more. This ultimate hand bomb skin solution is versatile and intensely moisturizing. While still staying true to our original bag bomb formula, used to heal dry cuticles, calluses, shaved skin, cracked skin, and split heels. I think they spelled heal wrong. They spelled that like your skin needs to heal versus the back of your foot, which is H E E L. <laughs> Works wonders for dry skin and calluses. Yeah, there we go. They spelled it right down here split heels. Dry skin and calluses, skin care, chafed and chapped skin, cracked hands, split heels. Let's see what this person said. My husband works in the cold and his hands are always cracked, bleeding, and sore. Oof, sounds familiar to me. Nothing he tried worked until this product. In a couple of weeks, his hands were healed. Even though they are healed, he still uses it to keep them from cracking anymore. Definitely a great product. Yeah, yeah it is pretty good. I mean, it's very messy, but... Pretty good. Bag Bomb works wonders. Vermont's original Bag Bomb provides relief for dried, cracked skin. Hands, lips, hmm, knees, feet, you name it. Lips, why would you put this on your mouth? <laughs> that would be weird. Well, then again, I think they make um, chapsticks, so never mind. Since 1899, Bag Bomb has been intensely moisturizing and helping protect skin with four simple ingredients, even in the toughest conditions. Bag Bomb works wonders for the whole family. For dry paws, it's a dog's best friend. Really? Put that on a dog? That would be so messy, though. It doesn't even rub into a human, a dog. I mean, if your dog needed it, though, why not? A small amount of bag ball applied to your lips, face, hands, cuticles, feet, elbows, knees, or anywhere in between works hard to moisturize and soften your severely dry skin. I will give them that though. It says use a little bit. And, um, you really do only need a little bit. It's got a weird way of spreading. Like, it starts out. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to sneeze. Hold on. <coughs> oh! Yeah, it starts out like. You use a tiny bit and it feels like nothing's happening and then all of a sudden it's all over your hand. Well, for me, my hands. And it's like, how did this happen? It just grows out of nowhere. So anyways, that's the video. I just figured maybe we could uh, kind of delve into this. 
make, make some make some uh, sense out of my hands when you see them. You know what's going on. It's not that I'm just some idiot who doesn't moisturize. It's it's, it's a lot deeper than that. <laughs> um, this also is something I was thinking about maybe trying to start to do. Maybe look into stuff, do some research videos. And uh, I didn't really know where to start. And then, you know, like I said, tonight my hands are in bad shape. And I was like, ooh, perfect starter. Do some research on my condition. I mean, I know enough about my condition, but to make a video for others to learn. So, yeah, I guess that's about it. And until next time, I said see ya.